Hi, this is Paul from Trending Who, What, Where, and When. Today, I will be speaking with the best-selling and award-winning author, Paul Hollis, about his book, The Hollow Man. Paul will be joining us from Vermilion, Ohio, USA. Hi, folks. My name is Paul Hollis. I'm an American author of fictional terrorism and espionage. My number one best-selling books in the Hollow Man series follow a U.S. government analyst across Europe in a trilogy of suspense. I'll begin by asking you to tell our followers your favorite spots in and around your home in Vermilion, Ohio. Take your friends and family when they came there. Uh, well, there's a, there's a couple of uh, places in particular. It, it's a very small town, so uh, there's not a, a lot to, to see and do here, but but there's a one very nice restaurant uh, called Quaker Steak and, and Lube, which is uh, on the uh, lake uh, and at the Vermilion River, which comes off of Lake Erie. Um, and so it's very nice, nice, uh, especially in the summertime, a very nice view of of um, of the lake and and the boats coming and going uh, past there. Um, another uh, restaurant uh, is a is called Big Ed's uh, uh, Grill, and um, that one is is actually in a building that uh, was a nineteenth uh, century turn of the turn of the century twentieth century uh, pharmacy, and uh, uh, was uh, uh, has been around the the. The area for probably a hundred years or more and at this point probably hundred and yeah hundred years uh, or so uh and uh very nice uh very very informal uh, uh bar and inside still has the the uh look of a pharmacy and a, and a soda fountain etc the kind of thing like that so uh, uh, a very neat place um the only sort of a real attraction around here is um uh, is about 30 miles away in sandusky it's a uh, uh, Cedar Point, which is a, a, a Six Flags type uh, of an area, and uh, it actually comes in with uh, uh, it, it. Its its draw is it, it only has roller coaster rides. Uh, it has no other kinds of rides, but okay. all roller coasters, and and apparently it has one of the fastest uh, roller coasters in the uh, in the world, and it takes off like a shot and, and it's like 20 second ride but it takes off like a shot of like a 200 miles an hour or something like that i i can't remember exactly but um uh it, it's it's quite a day uh quite a dizzying day uh, <laughs> to get to get to there so uh, and, and a lot of fun there i loved reading the hollow man a story of fictional terrorism and espionage set in europe in the mid 1970s based on true experiences. What inspired you to be a writer and to write The Hollow Man? Well, um, as you said there, it, it was really based on uh, some true events in the in the early 70s and and uh, uh, and actually based on uh, some things, my, some of my lesser known adventures in Europe at the time. Uh, I was was actually um, hired to uh, to follow um, uh, terrorist activities in, in Europe uh, at the time it was just starting to, to grow as as terror terrorism per se um, before that time set late 60s early 70s uh, when a politician was shot it was no big deal and people didn't really kind of refer to it as a uh, um, as a terrorist act it was just sort of like oh yeah another politician gets shot big deal um, but then it's it started to change and and um, and uh, my superiors needed to know uh, what was going on with it, and uh, and was it get, was it going to come and visit our shores here in the United States? And uh, so, I was assigned to uh, occasionally follow some people uh, around Europe and collect information and and sort of pass it along to uh, uh, to to the to the main guys who would give it to the professionals to resolve the situations in whatever way that they needed to. But but being a, a young, impulsive, untrained, hard-headed kind of a kid, uh, I, it didn't always work out that way. <laughs> so, and uh, we'll get into bet to more of that. But but, but back in the, the, in those days, uh, um, what was happening is, is, is that uh, the terrorism was sort of coming to the, to the normal person. And, and it was kind of, kind of like, uh, uh, indecisive and, and uh, fearful and, and, and people were were afraid that it would would now start affecting them you know when it's, when it's a politician or 
or someone like that, and no big deal because you know their politicians are a dime a dozen, I guess. You know, but but when it comes to when when it comes to uh, hurting my children, my the, the innocence of of youth of of people who have done theoretically nothing wrong, they're just kind of walking around, having to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That became a very fearful subject at, uh, at the time, and so. Um, that was that was really the scary uh, part of what was happening in Europe at that time, uh, and and it, w- and it was coming from all different directions too, which we can get into at a later time. But that really is is the inspiration for for the book series, really. Well, tell us about your book, The Hollow Man. The The Hollow Man is. Uh, is really about uh, about that experience. Uh, it it begins with a shocking event and, and ends with kind of a, uh, a creative kind of an ending. But but it's really about a, a young impulsive kind of a guy who uh, uh, who was basically the the boots on the ground in Europe at the time. To, uh, one of many. I'm 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 certain. I'm hoping so because I've I've never heard of any others, but. Um, but one of one of many that that would that would follow uh, collect information uh, in the old days it was with microfiche there were no cell phones or or uh, internet at, at the time and so you would have to go to libraries and and research things to read newspapers um, periodicals to see what was going on at the time uh, understand the people themselves that you were following uh, uh, their motivations or their uh, their their plans the the the, uh, the intents of, of what they wanted to do and it was it was it something that was that would stay local and, and remain there or would it be something that would go basically worldwide ie uh, come to American shores so so that is really um, what this this book is about. It's following this this uh, unprepared sort of a non-hero type guy around Europe and and, uh, um, uh, and and keeping him in trouble but out of trouble and and uh, so so there it, it goes. It, it's about eighty percent of the book is is about ninety percent true. Um, I, I I wasn't in all the scenes, so I, so I kind of made up a, a couple of scenes, but um, but mostly. Uh, True events and and uh, true characters and and uh, and that sort of thing. So so that really is what it's all about, without giving away the the entire plot. Tell us about the importance of dialogue in this book. My my writing is very visual, and by by that I mean that that I, I like to put the character right in uh, the, the reader right in the, the story with the character so that they can see and feel and understand what's going on around them uh, as a as a, a watcher uh, of the scene and uh, one of the most important things to do that is with um, with dialogue and um, and so, so so dialogue comes into uh, into many things and in, in a lot of books you see that everything is uh, is very um uh, put together and, and the, the people speak uh, with some level of education and and and, all, and uh, to me that that those kind of characters don't come off the page you you have to include uh, for me I, I include uh, um, the, uh, the motivations of the people of the of the speaker the their uh, intonations the words they choose the the accents uh, or lack of accent uh, uh, contractions even and or lack of contractions um, so and and all of that if you get that right the, the character walks off the page for you you know and then then it becomes real and and then you start to, to um, can, can sympathize and, and and you're sort of a confident then Don, in, in in the uh, uh, in, in the scene with with the characters tell us about bringing the streets and villages of Europe to life and offering a unique viewpoint. Well, the um, the locations are, are very um, important. Uh, they, um, uh, for example, a, a a a conversation or a scene with a maybe a a young man in a uh, on the Jersey Jersey Shore in an Italian restaurant would be a quite different conversation and quite different motivations for of what's going on around you than it would be if you were talking to the same. Uh, young man in a, in a back alley of Prague uh, during uh, the, the Cold War, for example. So, so the the, the, the actual um, location brings brings the power of of all the motivation and the cultures and and uh, the things that that we rely on um, 
uh, to, to, to say, oh, these, this is how we make our decisions on, on, a, on any particular day. That that is uh, that's where we go into there. The the um, the, the unique viewpoint, I think, uh, is the other part of your question is um, is pretty much um, the the untrained sort of a of a, of a narrator that you have. Uh, he's not a, a know it all and do it all and 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 uh, the perfect the perfect spy that uh, the, a Jason Bourne or a, or a um, uh, James Bond would be, and you know, it's like everything is everything is cool and right, and it works out well. Um, a, a lot of uh, a lot of things don't work out well, as we all know in, in life, uh, and and some of our decisions are not quite well thought out, which is which is exactly what happens to uh, to our main character. Um, fortunately, he has a uh, a friend who is uh, uh, who sort of watches over him, and I can I can tell you from from a, a fact that uh, she has saved my life probably a dozen times or more in, in that period of, of, of events there. So um, <clears throat> just, uh, you know, just to be uh, clear there that, I mean, that's just, just a normal kind of a everyday guy, uh, you know, he just, I'm, I'm the guy, you know, sort of thing. It's just a regular kind of a guy that is trying to trying to exist in a world that's, that's changing and, uh, and he doesn't understand it. So. You have a very interesting career trajectory. How do these elements influence your writing? I see you have a dual BA in English literature and psychology from the University of Illinois. I um, I actually majored in staying out of Vietnam, uh, which was, uh, I, I entered the college at uh, the end of 1967, um, which okay. was, which is, that was at the height of the war. And, uh, um, and there was a lot of things going on at the time. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sort of fell into a subculture that kind of changed my changed my life uh, and perspectives uh, figuratively and probably a little bit too literally. Um, but um, but there were a lot of things going on then. The, I participated in the in the um, uh, 1968 uh, Democratic Convention protests, and and there was the uh, Chicago Seven trials there going on and I, I was actually in Chicago there um, and uh, there was Woodstock you know in, in, the, in the late 60s and uh, I you know a lot of people are actually they, there's no saying that, that goes uh, if you if you remember the 60s you weren't there um, but uh, what I I do remember uh, some things and uh, I remember what 19 was like in 1969 and uh, I remember uh being uh, hyped on adrenaline and buzzed and hungry and, and uh, uh, wet and um, dirty at the same time. I remember dancing to the nonstop music. And uh, one thing I don't remember is, is another time like that. So that was really what was going on. And, and the next summer I, I hung out with, uh, with Carlos Santana and, and Grace Slick and uh, Garcia in, in, in the hate, you know, in, in, uh, in San Francisco. And it was just a, a remarkable time. And with that, I've, I've actually forgot your question. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was, was about to, <laughs> uh, in college. Yeah, that, that I, and I never, I never used, uh, I may have used a little bit of psychology and, and certainly English comes into, uh, into my writing and that, but that's, it was not forth, forth, forefront in my thinking at, at all. And during that time. And so, uh, you know that was a, that was a, a one a, an interesting uh, unrepeatable time in, in our in our history. So, well, working at a mortuary, the, the job you had there made it into your book. <laughs> yes, um, I uh, in high school uh, once I uh, I had a uh, uh, a job sweeping out a mortuary for. A couple of twin brothers who owned the mortuary, and uh, they let me uh, sweep out the, you know, clean up, tra change the garbage, and and uh, sweep the floors in in the in the mortuary. And I, one night, I was uh, actually sweeping up in in the with, with the bodies around. You know, they're prepping them for uh, um, embalming, et cetera, for the next day. And and uh, but they were all there with their white sheets on and big shot, you know, I, I, you know, doesn't bother me, right? So I'm sweeping away and all of a sudden I hear a, 
a groan from one of the tables and I, I turn around and, and there's a body sitting up on the table with the sheet over it and it's like oh my god that thing right there is between me and the door and so I I took the I took the broom using the joust and poked them like that bomb knocked them off the table and I just kept running up to, up through the uh, up through the main lobby and out the front door and I was turned left and I was gone and uh, so about two blocks later this car comes up and, and pulls in front of me to cut me off and and uh, so, and, and he says hey that was my brother Bob you know he's he's uh, just one of the brothers that own the place and uh, hey my brother Bob he's just having a little bit of fun with you and I said I quit <laughs> he says no you can't do that he was just he was just having a little fun and I said I don't care I quit <laughs> and he says well okay then come on by and pick up your last check he's I said I I'm I'm not you know you keep it you know keep it for your brother Bob <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so he, he looked at me and he says, well, can I have my broom back? And, and I, was, I still care. I looked down, I'm still carrying this broom from the, from the uh, basement. And uh, uh, so anyway, the, the long story short, uh, the, uh, the story gets around school and forever after that, I was known as Doc. Uh, so um, that is, that's where the, the, the character's name in the, in the book comes from as well, because it's basically me. So... You joined the Peace Corps and went to East Africa, Tanzania. Yes, um, I, as the alternative to going to Vietnam, I, I uh, joined the Peace Corps thinking that that would be a safe place. And they sent me for uh, training down to a place called uh, Paintsville, Kentucky it was. And it was close to the, the Cumberland Plateau, which is only a stone's throw from the lost world of West Virginia. If you've ever been there, it's, you'll, you'll understand that. And uh, uh, and I thought, she's they're not kidding after a couple of weeks that this is this is what the world is like. And, and uh, so when the opportunity came along to uh, to visit um, Africa, I thought, well, lions and tigers might be a little bit more uh, easy to handle than than dinosaurs in, in uh, West Virginia. So so I um, so I took that. I went there and. Uh, Yes, and my job there was was uh, digging latrines in uh, Tanzania, which was uh, if you if you are a gemstone collector, that's where the Tanzanite comes from, etc. But it had just become a country, a new country at that time. And uh, anyways, I was digging latrines and and uh, it, during monsoon se uh, season, and uh, um, and I couldn't tell if I was crying or if it was raining harder, and it was just it just a mess. I was up to my knees and some kind of uh, animal crap and mud and, and, you know, and it was just uh, there and I'm digging away. And, and uh, that is, that was uh, pretty much the extent of my uh, Peace Corps career, because at the time then a, a guy showed up and he, he, uh, he said, Hey, I've got, uh, uh, I, I got something better for you to do if you'd like to, to change change your your uh, skill set and your job calling and so I said well you know that uh, that might be better than than living here like this so uh, that that became that turned into a uh, you know another happenstance thing in my journey through life sort of thing so th then you you were touring Europe doing research on particular people events that would lead to confirmation or negation of of things situations and you were collecting information yes uh, that was uh the man who showed up and uh introduced himself uh, uh in uh, 1973 when i was over there uh said uh here, my offer is uh, you i'll give you a free tour of europe you can go anywhere you want do anything you want but i'm going to call on you every once in a while to to track to track uh, to shadow peep uh, a person or or an object or or uh, or an event etc and uh, you need to report back to me what's going on with it and and is it going to come and hurt us sort of thing and so um, I thought well okay yeah free trip in Europe anywhere I want to go that sounds pretty nice uh, rather than standing you know couldn't move my legs from the knees down because of uh, the mud and um so, uh, so he said, yeah, you know, do this. And uh, when you, uh, when you need money, go to American Express, give them this number and they'll give you money. 
And uh, so, um, so that sounded, whoa, you know, that sounds really cool. Uh, didn't understand that that uh, that that included then a a, a three week training with uh, with a special uh, special forces uh, marine and I had rethought about ten times uh, during that time uh, rethought my job opportunity <laughs> it wasn't going to work out because that was that was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life up to that point and um, and so uh, but you know it it it, it just sort of got thrown into it and and you know being a kid it's like oh let's try this oh let's try that and and um and it was just like one thing happened after another and there i found myself in europe uh, uh tracking people and and understanding what they were doing and and why they were doing it mostly so you also worked for ibm and others in worldwide physical and video security working in all 50 u.s states having lived and worked in over 50 countries across five continents in Europe. Around the time of uh, 2001, 9-11, mm -hmm. um, the world kind of started to realize that we're not safe. Life is pretty tenuous. Um, and and it's, it's just in your everyday life. If you're, you, you, know, you, you go for a walk or you drive a car, you're, you, you understand now that you're really not safe in any of those environments. And, uh, so it became a priority uh, for uh, IBM, uh, since we had presence all over the world, um, that, uh, that they would get involved with this. And, and one of the things is, uh, secu uh, is security uh, and surveillance in particular. Um, so it, I, uh, I had the, the fortune to be in the right place at the right time to actually create something called uh, intelligent video surveillance, um, which uh, actually, let's see if I can put it into uh, layman's terms. Okay, so you're so you're in a, a store, Target, Kmart, Carrefour doesn't really matter, and uh, you pick up an item. This this um, uh, intelligent video surveillance would actually tag that item to you, in specific and would follow you around the store. And, and if you didn't either separate yourself from that, that item, like put it back on the shelf or pay for it, then you are a thief, you know, by default, right? So, so that was kind of that, but it, but it actually had uh, applications to uh, casinos and uh, jewelry stores and, um, you know, retail and, and uh, I, you know, God knows what all, every kind of oil and, and, uh, and police departments, et cetera, you can get there. So that is basically what I did at um, uh, IBM. And they, and they sort of sent you around the world to, to, uh, to, to talk about this and to, to get people, uh, get companies to understand what, what it was like and, and how it could protect them a bit more, uh, even though, video surveillance for the most part is is an after the fact kind of a thing oh you know there's a robbery and well let's look at the video and see what happened but but this kind of thing brought it uh to the the, the intelligence of this one brought it to the forefront to say you can have you can have an interactive uh uh immediate response to something that, that's happening in your in your store or your environment uh, anywhere in the world there Please tell us about your many achievements and awards for the Hollow Man. You have the world's best story contest in 2014. You were the winner. Yes, um, I on a whim I actually uh, sent the book in to to be uh, 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 to be reviewed uh, with along with about 2,000. I I, I understand about 2,000 2,500 other English speaking books uh, that were all in this. Uh, uh, in this in this uh, contest and and uh i had not expected to hear from them again and and uh they suddenly announced that i was in the top 10 and then a winner of of the the, the thing and um it was uh, as big a surprise to me as it was to everybody else <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I actually won this contest and uh, and um uh, it was a, an amazing fascinating experience you're also Amazon number one bestseller. <clears throat> that that actually occurred before the 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 uh, the, the 2014 uh, um, uh, award for best book. Um, 
in the first couple of weeks, um, it, it, it turns out that on uh, Amazon, if you sell a lot of books, you get to be in the top 100 of your of your uh, of your category, and that and that makes you a quote unquote bestseller. And but the real prize that we had there is uh, is the number one spot. It sold the most books in a in particular time period, two weeks or a month, or I can't remember what it was. But yeah, it, it, it happened. I sold a lot of books in a in a, in a short period of time, and and uh, that is, is that's how uh, that works there at uh, at um, Amazon. Okay. You also had, oh, oh, had the awesome Indies Award of Excellence. That is um, an, uh, so, uh, as an award out of Australia that uh, needs to have uh, two um, five-star um, uh, reviews to, to it from, from, their, from their staff members in particular. And um, <clears throat> that, that award is, uh, is um, really uh, meant for Australia and uh, um, and the United States and and other English speaking countries and uh, uh, there's there is another award that was that's attached to that that is um, that uh, ascribed me uh, it, it was called at the time and and uh, th they actually did the same thing for the European uh, reader uh, in they were out of uh, the, of the UK there. Please tell us about your experiences being an international conference speaker. International conference speaking is it was um, is something that came along with the uh, with the intelligent video surveillance uh, uh, application that we that we were marketing at the time. And um, when when people understand uh, that they that they sort of need some kind of a quote unquote protection from uh, from the many let's say illegal entities out there uh, they they start wanting to to know more about it and and that was that was what i did for a a, a, a portion of time it was um was to tell them about you know how this works and what it, what it works and and uh what it covers what it doesn't cover um, um those those sorts of things there um uh many facets to it and, and kind of uh, a sidetrack to sort of get into most of it right now but but I actually, yeah, lived in uh, ten foreign countries uh, for for about a total of about ten or twelve years, I think. Uh, but I I had a home in uh, London and Paris and Madrid and uh, Rome and Sao Paulo, Brazil and Tokyo, you know, on and on and on, and even in uh, uh, Alaska, where where I had twenty four hours of sunshine in the summer and and. Uh, and about three hours of sunshine in the winter, uh, you know. So, but if you're thinking of a, you know, your dream vacation kind of thing, I've I've probably been there, you know, honestly. So, uh, and um, and probably more than once. I don't know, but but that, but but the conference speaking is all. Uh, it was all about uh, um, being being the quote the the so-called expert in in uh, video surveillance at the time. So. Well, that that one sounds like an interesting job. Uh, it was quite interesting, and and uh, there were a lot of um, of uh, short stories that that had come out of that. You know, I, I was once I was uh, speaking to a, a a group in South Korea, a group of, of uh, reporters, in fact, uh, uh, and um, we all had uh, earphones on because we had simultaneous translators going on, so, so that. When they asked a, the uh, uh, a question in Korean, that they would tell me what they said, and then I can answer, and then they would translate back, you know, sort of thing. And so this one <clears throat> one gentleman stood up and he and he asked a question, and and uh, and I was waiting for the the response, and and the lady never said in English. She just kind of stopped, hesitated, and and another guy got up the the the. Um, uh, the, the organizer of the meeting uh, got up and, and said something to him and, and pointed to him and uh, um, and said something in Korean and and he sat down and and uh, the next guy got up and asked a question and, and the and the conversation went on as normal and so at, at the end of the of the uh, uh, the presentation I asked the guy what what went on there you know what happened there and he says oh he says he asked a stupid question and I told him to shut up and sit down <laughs> so it's like, it like okay uh, there and uh, and there was another instance where uh, I was talking to a Japanese group and and uh, I was talking about stable computer environment and uh, 
a gentleman asked me, excuse me, but what does a horse farm have to do with a computer system? And, and <clears throat> it brought to me, it brought an understanding to me of, of you know, sort of I'm, a, I'm kind of a guy that uh, learns from every situation. And it kind of brought to me that, that uh, we, in English, we have, and maybe in, in other languages as well, but uh, we have so many different meanings for one word. And when you learn English from as a second language, you learn basically one meaning for uh, one word, and which is which you would think that that's the way that, that it works everywhere. So, uh, but, but, you know, as we know, stable, stable means much more than many more things than a, than a, um, a, a horse barn and, and, and more, more than, more than uh, us just thinking, you know, that, 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 that we know one thing and they, and they're perceiving another. So um, <clears throat> the, the, yeah, it was, it was interesting to be a, an international speaker. Tell us about your experiences teaching companies about global implications. I think probably the the internet more than anything uh, sort of shrunk the world down to a, a to a bite size of of, uh, of of kind of like everything in in one little ball. Um, the internet sort of opened up uh, in the late you know mid to late nineties. Opened up a whole world that we that countries could then go to for, uh, um, <clears throat> for example, commerce and education and uh, money financing, money laundering, you know, I mean, all, all those kinds of things go in into, um, now you have a whole new market instead of, instead of Alabama, you, now you can market to the whole United States. Instead of the United States, you can market to, to Europe. And instead of Europe, you know, you go out of the world and vice versa for them to be to, to do the same here, but what they, but a lot of things, what they didn't understand were the cultural differences and the, and the thought processes of what was, what would be correct in those situations and what might not be correct in situations of, of how you would do business. So, so businesses all had to kind of, as an example, in, in the commerce area, businesses all had to sort of meld the way they do business to to relate to everyone else who's doing business right and and how they how they do that and in the uh, another short story I have, I have a million of them but um in in africa the gerber baby food was a was a bust it didn't it didn't do anything it, it wouldn't sell anything because in in africa they, they didn't understand that the what's on the label is what's inside the can so if you see a baby's face on a on the on the can or the bottle in this case, you're not going to eat that because that's cannibalism, right? So so they had to understand the people had to understand how to market in different countries and that and and that was where where I came in with pulling it, trying to pull it all together for everybody to say you know these are the the cultural differences and these are these are the religious differences and and the business the business economic differences you know they're they're all that and you have to you have to sort out how how you're going to relate and how you're going to do business in that environment there, as opposed to what you're used to. Tell us about your other books. You have London Bridge is Falling Down, which is already published. London London Bridge is Falling Down is uh, uh, was was uh, occurring about the same time. In, in fact, it, it is the the week after the Hollow Man ends. I'm back. I'm in London and uh, and. Uh, thrown into the middle of, of what they call the troubles at that time with the IRA and, and um, uh, you know, the, the, the car bombs and, and uh, that sort of thing. And, and uh, that is basically what it's about. It's, a, it's about a, a group of uh, men who were uh, sort of using the, the car bombs and the bombings as an overlay to do something more sinister, uh, which I, which I, which would give away the story if I, if I tell you what that was. But, but they had a, there was a, there was a so-called list at the time of places that they were going to be bombing and and put uh, put uh, bombs and and uh, uh, attempted murders of of certain people, et cetera, like that. And so it's all about finding out what what uh, was going on at the time and and who was behind it all and. Uh, uh, and and to stop it in the end. You're working on a book called Surviving Prague. Right. That was um, uh, that 
was uh, a little bit after that, uh, I, uh, my uh, partner who I, I had mentioned before, uh, Zeta, uh, an MI, MI6 agent, uh, was actually trapped in, in Prague and in, in Czechoslovakia for a couple of reasons. This is in, during the Cold War, of course, and the Iron Curtain uh, uh, scenario. And uh, I actually broke into um, Czechoslovakia uh, as opposed to breaking out of Czechoslovakia to go help her uh, to, uh, she was, uh, had been accused of murder and uh, espionage and things like that. And so we had to go there and find out uh, there and then then <clears throat> she wouldn't leave and so we had to find out what was what was going on there that that brought up the whole the situation of having her trapped there so uh, uh, it um, that that would be that would be what that one's about it's about three quarters finished and should be out in uh, early part of next year please share with us any advice that you would have for new writers new writers I would say uh, what you want to do is uh, write the book that you need to tell not the book you think that that people are going to like or that or that uh agents are going to like or or that publishers are going to publish um they're going to hear a lot of noise out there uh, about this and that and how to do this and how to do that and 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 they just need to 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 get rid of the noise and write your book write every day write at the same time or just set up your schedule but write every day until it's done and then <clears throat> when it's done uh, proof it uh, uh, synthesize your voice you know uh, uh, make sure it's exactly the way you want it and then I would say uh, hire a hire a um, uh, an editor to edit it and that will take it to the next level you you won't always agree with with what the editor says, and that's okay because you, it's it's uh, you know there are different perspectives there, and you and you need to talk about it. But 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 that person, the editor, will take you to a, to another level of of, uh, of greatness. Really, I read that when asked what three things do you tell a successful writer, you responded, market, market, market. As far as people what they need to do to become successful. Yeah, I hate to say this, but writing the book is the easy part. Yeah, you you may have the best book in the world, the most most thrilling, most interesting, the the most detailed, but if you if you cannot get it to the right place at the right time and let everybody know about it, it it's you you it's just going to take up shelf on your book uh, on your uh, on your uh, your bookcase and and uh, it's not going to go anywhere after that. Um, what you need to do marketing uh, is a uh, is a constant job. You have to continually um, uh, build your build your platform, uh, build the author platform, uh, including um, uh, uh, website and uh, printed materials, anything like that. You you have to uh, continually network with people. You have to continually. Uh, uh, keep your, keep your information fresh. You know, you can't let it go more than two or three weeks, uh, two or three weeks without having some kind of a change to, to what you're doing. And, uh, but, but the, the, your platform, like you are the business as a, as a writer, you are, you are your own business. You, you have been all your life. You've been your, your own, every time you have an inter, a job interview, you're selling yourself every time, every day at work, you're selling yourself to say, ah, I did this, you know, I, I'm, I'm worth being here. I should have a raise. I should have a promotion. That, that is what, that's what you're doing. But in the book world, it's the same thing. And, and if you, um, it's, and I say that it's nonstop because if your name isn't Patterson or Balducci or, Lee Child, et cetera, Conley, uh, the the agents and the and the uh, uh, and the publishers are not going to do it for you anymore. You know, with the onset of the internet and that, they're not going to do it for you anymore unless unless you're a proven entity uh, that has proven to be to to make a, a ton of money uh, for them, not for you, but for them. <laughs> it's is the it's all they're thinking about is their money, not yours. So, but anyway, uh, you you. Um, you need to uh, to to continually and continually market, and and, and the, the day you think you're done, you're not done because you got to market some more. And um, 
and, and there's always somebody that hasn't hasn't heard about you. You're, you're, uh, and so you you've got to make your 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 face out there known. You've got to get uh, a special a special uh, uh, subject here is is reviews uh, reviews on uh, on on uh, uh, especially Amazon, maybe Goodreads, uh, some other places are very critical to, to the reason that people will say, oh, I'll pick up this book and, and, uh, and read it. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the end, that's, that's what you're doing. You're just kind of marketing, marketing, marketing all the time. And, and, and until you get tired of it, you know, I mean, that's basically you, you have to, you have to market yourself and your book. How did you build such a strong presence on social media? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, that that's a, a, a good story. My this is my philosophy. It's not anyone else's. But but what I what I did was was I didn't just say, "Look at me, I'm a celebrity, uh, and I've got two million followers, and and I'm, and I'm following maybe fifteen, right? That is not how you. I mean, in certain brands, you, you might say, oh, you know, this person is kind of interesting, so I'll follow them. But, what, but what's really happening is that there, it's all about me when you get the, the two to two million, and it's not about your followers. But so what you have to do is, um, is you have to interact with your followers. You have to, you have to exchange ideas. You have to talk to them. You have to do this. And, and I, have an, uh, uh, I have a bit over 80,000 uh, followers on Twitter, for example, but I also follow 75,000. Uh, so so um, it's, it's all about understanding the people, knowing them, asking questions, uh, relating to the people. And when you do that, then, then you get millions of eyeballs on, on your book that you didn't have before. Even with the 80,000, you're, you're getting, I get probably 3 million a day eyeballs to, to, uh, to, to, look, at, to, to look at something that I've done it's because the, the, peop the, the people that you are interacting with, you know, uh, you quote unquote, you know, as best you can over uh, any sort of a uh, media sort, uh, uh, environment. So, um, so, so my, my, the way I've done it is just kind of interact with people, make them, make them quote unquote friends, make them and, and do things for them. You know, you, if they, if they uh, retweet yours, you retweet them. If they repost yours, you, you, re you repost their, theirs too, as well. I mean, it's, it's just the, uh, it's just a kind of a common sense sort of a, uh, of a deal. I mean, yes, you can, you can get, you, you can get, um, you know, a hundred thousand followers and, and follow still 10 or 15. And, and, uh, I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of people do that, but, but it, I also look at, at their posts and I say, I've never heard of this guy. He's got two million, two million for It's because he, he's he's just like, look at me. I, I'm I'm here, so so let me, you know, let me you bask in my light, you know, it's my sunshine, and and you'll be great too. And and that's not how it works. So uh, I I just say interact and 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 uh, and build your friends with your uh, and your acquaintances, your network, whatever you want to call it. Uh, build those as you build your own uh, brand. The reason that I that I write in 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 the end is is uh, is really to tell people to get out there and experience the world. I I know I know so many people. Uh, I lived in St. Louis for a while, and it's right on the river. And I know hundreds of people who had never even crossed the river, Mississippi River, to go to Illinois. It's like. Are you kidding me? Get out there. There's a whole world out there. And if you, you don't understand people, go and talk to them. You know, you, when you're in Europe uh, or South America, you, 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 you talk to people and you understand their motivations, their religious beliefs, their political beliefs, their, their understanding of what to eat in dinner time and when and where and how to do that. And, and you start to understand that, gee, they're just kind of people that are well, a little bit different, you know, brought up a little bit different, but they're basically people. And, and so, what I would what I would want people to do is just go out and see the world, experience things, uh, you know, at, at at a at a human level, and and understand what's going on around them, and not just say oh, I'm going to I'm going to Target to pick up a a, you know, a steak or something, whatever it is, a, a toaster. 
uh, and and in and out. Don't talk. Don't talk to anybody. Don't see anybody. I mean, just just kind of live your life and, and not let it pass you by. I mean, my life was thrown at me, and and I was lucky in in all the things that I have ever done in my life and all the different lives I've had. And uh, but but not not everyone is that lucky to to see the world on somebody else's money. Um, so so I, but I would say as as much as you can get out and talk to people and see see what they're doing and understand you'll have a much broader uh, viewpoint uh, not 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 a closed concept of oh the Muslims must be bad you know or or the the you know whatever it is you know I, I don't know so. Um, but but that's that's what you that's what I would let like to let people leave with you know to 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 say just get out there and, and see the world understand it involve yourself in it. I, I could tell reading your book that you'd spent a lot of time in some of those places, especially in France. You were really familiar with France. It took me to, just like I was there. Good good I'm glad that that was my that's my purpose and my point is to to immerse the reader in in exactly what's going on at the time and, and be on the not just in Paris but on the streets and and on the thing on the exact street or a, or a cafe that's there and and, uh, and understand to see see them and, and see what's going on there so but I, I you know I got one review honestly that said uh, that actually more than one but but there was one review that said um, that that the hollow man should really belongs on the big screen and, and that to me was the biggest success there is, is that is that you it, it it would translate very easily to a movie where you're watching something like that and 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 now you're now you're totally immersed in in the the visual as well as the hearing and the etc et so uh that would yeah be true. That, it would work perfectly for that it's been a, it's been a real pleasure thank you